המחלות. אשא הנה אל חכרים, מהיין היה וחזרי. אז רימיהם אדוני, עושה שמיים וארץ. אל יתן למוהות רגלך, אל ינוהום שומרך. הנה לא ינום ולא ישן. שומר ישראל, אדוני שומריך, אדוני יצילך, עליית ימינך, יומם השמש לא יככה, וירח בלילה. אדוני שמורך מכל רבע, ישמור את נפשך. אדוני שמור את צאתך ובוהך, מיתה ועד העולם. כל אומר קרא ואמר מה אקרא, כל הבשר חציר וכל חסדו כציץ השדה, יבש חציר נובל ציץ כי רוח אדוני נשבה בו. אכן חציר העם, יבש חציר נובל ציץ ודבר אלוהינו יקום לעולם. A voice says cry out, but I ask what shall I cry? All flesh is like grass, and all of its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades when a wind from God blows upon it. Surely, therefore, people are like grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God endures forever. First of all, I really wanted to uh, start the service on time because I think your dad would have been very happy to start on time. He always ran on time. He would have been very upset if the service started late. He was never late. He was always early. I know if dinner was in one of your homes, it was called for 6 p.m., you already had to build in your schedule that Larry would show up at 5 p.m., and that's when the evening would really begin. And I say this with love. You know I say this with love and respect. But you know the normal practice at a service, a funeral service, is to bring the casket in a good hour before the service starts. And when I realized that, I said, that's about right. He would come an hour before an event would happen. But then again, he's not here. Truth is, he's not here. And that fact immediately changes your life. And whether he once made you laugh or made you angry, whether he once dealt with you softly or aggressively, whether you were the object of his love or his temper, his absence now changes your life. Do you remember him as a father and as a grandfather, uh, as a brother? Howard, I want to give you your condolences. As a great-grandfather? But before all of that, he was a son. And he cer certainly was not born with a silver spoon in his mouth. And so he did the best he could. And sometimes that was good enough, and sometimes it wasn't very good, and he made mistakes because he didn't know any better. He did the best he could, though, by working, by always working, to make a buck, to make life a little better, to try to get ahead, and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't work. He entered this world and then he entered adolescence and then he entered adulthood and then he entered the workforce and marriage and parenthood and there were no guidebooks along the way. He didn't have manuals. He did the best he could based on his experience and the experience of his life early on taught him to try to survive. And to survive made him sometimes aggressive and sometimes prickly and often unpredictable. You told me that years later he would help learn, he would help kids learn how to swim who went to the pool. And you said really what happened is that he'd teach the kid to swim by basically throwing the kid in the water. Sink or swim, and I said to myself, that's his life. That was part of his life experience. 
thrown into it, no instruction, no role models, no guidance, and he had to thrash around to survive. You know, he would say to me, I'm not a religious man, and I ask you the same question. You say, he's not a religious man, but I'm going to respectfully disagree because he demonstrated the two most important attributes of a Jew. It's the two attributes that each and every Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, a rabbi is going to preach to you. Sometimes a rabbi is going to look just like me. A rabbi is going to preach to you every year about these two attributes, to be a good human being and a good Jew. And he had both of them 100%. And because of these attributes, it made his life a success. Number one, he reflected upon his life. He reflected upon his deeds. He grew to understand his journey. And he grew to understand himself. And number two, he changed. He changed. Every year the message will be from no matter what pulpit you go to, acknowledge who you are in your deeds, and if you're not satisfied, you can change. You can break old patterns of behavior and begin new ones. Life is not being. Life is in becoming, becoming the better part of yourself, and that's exactly what he did. He became the greatest grandfather and the greatest great-grandfather and a great husband, and I might add, a good role model as a father of someone who said, life isn't over until it's over. If I am blessed with 94 years, that's going to be 94 years where love is going to be possible, where closeness is possible, where you can make peace with, with demons and live for those whom you love. And proof of what I'm saying is that those who cared for him at Menorah Park for these last 13 months would have no idea what I'm talking about. Because he was the mayor. They loved him. And he loved people. And his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren would have no reason to believe anything I'm saying about a difficult early part of his life because they knew him as someone who would do anything for them, who would do anything for them out of love and out of affection and with a lot of sloppy, wet kisses. That's what they knew. Whether going to movies with you or making you breakfast and taking your orders, for breakfast or leaving candies near the bed for you to come and get, or taking your child for the day when it was clear Tammy was about to kill Alex. Whatever those situations were, he was there. That is their life experience. That's their life experience. And he made that possible. He gave them a different life experience in his own early on. There is so much in the atmosphere of a child's home that contributes to that child's sense of belonging or which completely destroys that child's sense of being wanted. Larry had very few of the building blocks that other kids have and he felt deep hurt from it, but he grew. Now he did something else in his life that's also very much part of being Jewish and it also helped him. He married well. <laughs> Your mother was the salt of the earth. She was his working partner and they worked together they went out together. She was his playmate. She was his sounding board. And he respected her, and he did everything with her. They would accompany each other on the hobbies and the chores of life, the shopping and the work and the play. And it's not exaggerating to say he understood love for the first time in his love in marriage. And after they got married, they lived with her parents, and he embraced the love of her family. He loved the restaurant business whether it was deli or a coffee shop. He loved the food preparation. He loved the people contact. And he worked, and he worked effort was his life story. And he worked in the clothing sales area as well. Babe and Larry loved to dance together. When they were younger, you'd find them sitting in front of the TV, watching TV, spending evenings together. They had longtime friends. He loved her, and he listened to her. She loved him in many ways, and most of all, she understood him. And he trusted her, and they had a wonderful, wonderful life together. You know, I've known this family for a long time. And one thing I can always say, I always walk away saying, you guys have no personality, no sense of humor, <laughs> nothing to say. If you are the product of their love, they had a wonderful and blessed and sensational life. Shelley, you were the model daughter who always did what you were told. As a little girl, you knew what to do. As an adult, you knew what to do. You reached out so that your dad would live with you after your mom died. You were a blessing to him. And Alan, this is a very powerful day for you. I know that. Your friendship with your father was not only important to you. I think it was a powerful piece 
of his life, a powerful feeling that he needed. His life would not have been as fulfilled without the two of you reconnecting as adults. And you knew he always had your back. And listen, if your dad was someone who reflected and thought deeply about his life, your emotions in these days reveal you also, like your father, as someone who reflects long and hard about the journey that gets you here today. He loved his family deeply, and the more of you that there were, the more love he had in his heart. He knew and he expressed it when Tammy was born as the first grandchild. As a grandfather, he began to be the person he felt he was meant to be. So I just want to close by saying I know it's a religious, I'm going to refer to a religious moment, but uh, when you're sitting around at your seders, you should raise a glass for L'chaim, to life, to his life. Because he lived with a good name and he died with a good name. Uh, Cindy, I think Cindy's going to come up. From a young age, Papa had a high hopes. High apple pie in the sky hopes. And from that glimmer of, of aspiration, along came all of us. Once upon a time, Papa told me that he dreamt us. Because he wasn't provided with the love he deserved during his childhood, he spent his entire life working and fighting through the storms that came his way just so that he could build a family of his own. He is, I say is, because he always will be, the patriarch of our family. It wasn't until I reached college that I realized how rare and lucky I was to have such a large and tight-knit group I could call my own. Most families only talk to their immediate relatives, and I'd like to think I have a thousand of them, all because of Papa. From the time I knew him, he led his life with compassion and love for the people he cared for most. His family was always his number one priority, and he never allowed that to slip anybody's mind. He lived his life through song and a smile on his face. I know for a fact that's how he would want all of us to be today. This is our opportunity to celebrate his life and honor the warmth and affection he carried along the way. Some may say that he didn't stumble upon many successes in his life. His record-breaking amount of hospital visits and surgeries can attest to that. <laughs> However, he did succeed in the most important way possible, by creating us. He was a soft-spoken man, at least during the 20 years I was fortunate enough to spend with him. But there is one thing that he never kept quiet the immense amount of love he had for his family. We were the one thing that kept him moving. If we were born with the weakness to fall, we were born with the strength to rise. This is the time where we have to rise because Papa is happy now and at peace. He's probably making eggs for Gigi up there and singing his flat cap off. <laughs> He'd want us to be celebrating the lives we have as a result of him. I know for sure he'd be yelling at me to show him my smile that always turned him, his mood around when nothing else could. Papa gave us the ability to persevere, and that's why I know we're all going to be okay. We were his compound interest after all. I'm lucky to be a part of his life during his last chapters, and even though they were the final ones, that's the thing about chapters. The stories always live on. One thing Papa would want us to remember, if the hurt comes, so will the happiness. So here's a smile just for you, Pops. We love you more. Let's rise now for the memorial prayer. Hey, 
במחלות קדושכם ודבורים, כזו אחר גרקי המזהירים, את נשמעת לייבל בן דניאל שהלך לעולמו. בגנת גנת הים נוחתו, אנא בבל גרר חמים, אסתירג בסתר כנפך לעולמים, ותצרור בצרור החיים את נשמתו, אדוני ונחלתו. וינוח בשלום על משכבו, ונאמר אמן. May we remember all of the worthy and the righteous deeds that he performed while in the land of the living. May his soul be bound up in the bonds of eternal life. May he rest in peace, and we all say אמן. Let's be seated. We want to offer our condolences to the family, uh, to Shelley and Alan, uh, Aryeh, Irit, uh, Howard and Sheila, uh, to the grandchildren, Tammy and Matthew, Nathan and Shiloh, Julie and Robert, Michael and Mary, Randy and Adam, and to the great-grandchildren, Sydney, Drew, Alex, Lily, Max, Sebastian, Callan, Chase, Reed, Madison, Jonah, Sloan, and Graham. We want to uh, pause in the service at this time to arrange the processional. We'll be moving to the burial site in order to complete the service for today. Uh, following the burial service, a family will receive friends for the beginning of the Shiva visitation uh, at the Lushtag residence in Lynnhurst, 5404 Chickadee Lane, 5404 Chickadee Lane. Uh, the home of Alan and Irit Lushtag in Lynnhurst, today following services until 5 p.m., tomorrow evening 7 to 9 p.m., Sunday 1 to 4 p.m., and again 7 to 9 p.m. Please remain in your seats for another moment. The pallbearer should now come forward. 